What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm down at HBI Auto and we get to take a look at the latest generation for this Porsche model. This is the 992 911 Carrera S. So huge shout out to HBI Auto for providing this sports car for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. I'll have all that info down in the description. The model that you see behind me is finished off in black and it has a list price right around $146,000. So to start off today's review, we're gonna take a look at what powers this 911. This has a rear mounted three liter twin turbo flat six cylinder engine. It's paired with the eight speed dual clutch transmission and pumps out 443 horsepower around 6,500 RPM and 390 pound feet of torque around 2,300 RPM. This is rear wheel drive. It weighs in right around 3,200 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in as quick as three seconds up to its top speed of 191 miles an hour. And it has a fuel capacity of 16.9 gallons. You can expect to see around 20 miles per gallon in the city and 26 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 96 and a half inches. Its overall length is 177.9. It has a width of 72.9 and a height of 60.8 inches. So as we move on to the exterior now for the all new 992-911 Carrera, let's start off with these LED headlights. So they still retain the same design that Porsche is known for on their Carrera models. We have the quad beam design within the housing and they have a really nice design with all the bodywork surrounding it. You can see this small indention here, flows nicely with the side fender there. And as we move on to the lower section of the bumper, you can see the forward facing camera along with all the parking sensors. This also has LED DRLs and LED turn signals. You'll see those are nicely incorporated on both sides. And then you'll see this has a small lip spoiler on the lower section of the bumper there and really clean lines coming down the hood. We have the Porsche badge right in the center. And this also has front storage space. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. You can use a button located inside or just hold this button on the key fob and then up underneath, it's just like opening up a hood where you can see I currently have my camera bag and some other things in here right now. It's a very deep compartment. You can definitely fit a lot of items for two people in this vehicle. You can go on a trip, whatever it may be, and fit a lot of luggage. Definitely a deep compartment, so that's great to see, especially for a sports car like this. It makes it very practical, so you could daily drive this if you needed to. And then as we work our way to the side profile now, we have a really nice set of wheels. You can see the multi-spoke design to them, Really nice finish against this exterior black. And this specific model has the carbon ceramic brakes. We have just over 16 inches up front for the rotors and 15 and a half inches in the rear. You can see just above the passenger side front tire is the fuel cap. We have the body colored side mirrors. There's also a camera underneath each one. I'll show that camera system later on in today's video. This has large fender arches for the rear tires. These are 315s in the rear. And you can see from this angle just how much wider they are than the fronts. To give it a really nice look, we have that coupe-like design, of course, leading all the way to the rear, where you can see I currently have the spoiler deployed. There's a button on the interior, which you can do this, so you don't have to be at speed. So that way you can see what it looks like. Definitely gives it a great design. And then you can see the full connector bar for the LED brake lights and tail lights. This has LED turn signals too. Really nice design with Porsche spelled out just below it. We have the backup camera along with all the parking sensors and I really like the dual exhaust tips. They're a little bit different than the previous generation. So it definitely has a really nice sleek exterior design. So coming back to the key fob now, you'll see this is how we release the front storage space. We have lock and unlock. I'm gonna lock the vehicle right now. And with the key in my pocket, all I need to do is place my fingertips just underneath the door handle and you can see it pop out. If I put my finger on the top there, that is how it locks. So it's really nice to have that flush design for these door handles. Where now we can take a look at this door panel. It's finished off in black leather. Really nice brushed finish to this trim piece right here, along with being on the release handle. You can see lock and unlock finished off in piano black. We have the side mirror adjustments along with the window controls. This also has a Bose audio sound system. And you can see there's a good amount of storage space in the lower section of the door for items that you need to place there, just making it a little bit more practical. You can see on the door sill here, we have 911 Carrera S. And then this is how you open up the engine compartment as well as the front storage space. And then moving on to these two-tone seats, you'll see they're primarily finished off in black leather. Really nice insert running down the middle. This also has yellow seat belts, perfectly matches the yellow brake calipers. Up front, we have the adjuster bar to move these forwards and backwards. And down on the side are the rest of the automatic adjustments. Now it's time to take a look at the interior for this 911 Carrera S. I currently have the door opened all the way. This is a low car, but it's very easy to get in and out. We have a pretty narrow door sill, and then we have the grab handle, of course. 
As we look at the steering wheel now, you'll see it's completely finished off in black leather, more black stitching. You can see the center black stripe right in the middle. And then with the foot on the brake, we actually have the ignition over on the left side. You can see it resembles a key. It's not the true key fob, but with my foot on the brake, we can use this and start this up. And coming back to this gauge cluster, you'll see front and center, we have the analog tack, along with your miles per hour and what gear you're in. It's finished off in yellow as the background, just to match the seat belts and the brake calipers. And then on each side of that, we have a digital screen. So starting over on the right side, currently on the far right, you can see the fuel gauge, as well as engine temperature and your distance until empty. And then to the left of that, you can go through that information using these buttons over on the right side of the steering wheel. So currently you can see your trip information. If I scroll up, you can look at some more general vitals that you can pull up. You can also adjust the different driving modes that the vehicle is in. We also have that down on the right side of the steering wheel just by turning this dial. So you can see there's wet along with normal, sport, sport plus, and individual. If you push on the center button on the driving mode, that will give you the sport response. So it'll give you a little bit more throttle response if you're out on the highway and you're going to pass. You can push on that button and use that as needed. And then as we make our way to the left screen, all I need to do is push this button right here. And now we're looking at the navigation where you can also see the miles per hour. And if I scroll up, you can also look at the speed limiting if you like to have that set. And then on the far left, you can see the time as well as the outside temperature. So it's a really nice layout. It provides you with a lot of information. Over on the left side of the steering wheel, you can see your Bluetooth as well as your volume control. You can also push on this button here and personalize it. So you'll see that right in the middle screen there. And you also have track for the next song in your music. This also has steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Finish off in more of that dark gray just to give it a great look. And then as we work our way to the left side of the steering wheel, you can see all the headlight adjustments as well as one air vent. We have leather covering the entire dash with a clock in the center, of course, finished off with the yellow background. You'll see two air vents as well. And then right in the middle, we have this touchscreen system, a lot more information that you can go through. You'll see over on the left side is basically all of the presets. So if I push on this upper left one, this is how you get to your home screen basically, where you can look at all this information. We have music along with your voice commands. This vehicle has engine start stop. And when your phone is paired, you can look at all that info over on the far right. We can also pull up the map so you can see that in full screen, go to your media, go to your phone again for all of that information. If we go into car now, you can look at all the driving modes that I currently went over. This is another way to adjust them if needed. We have the engine start stop as well as the exhaust system. So basically making it louder or quieter. We have the spoiler as well as different modes for the chassis. And you can go through a lot more information just depending on how you like to drive this and set up everything that you'd like. We even have a lap timer that you can start. If we scroll down over on this left side, we can pull up all the climate control information. You can also go into different apps. So if you'd like to use any of these, you have those available. We have the active assist that you can turn on and off as well as the parking sensors, which you can turn on and off as well. You can go into your audio, set up your radio and all that information. And then we have different driver profiles. You can go into your assistance, your displays, all this information here to get that set up the way that you would like to. So we definitely have a lot of information front and center. You'll notice we have a really nice tray running all the way to the passenger side. So that screen is sunk in a little bit. It will keep this screen out of the sun too. We have this large lip on the top. So it's definitely in a good spot. And then below that, you can see all these toggles here. Starting on the right side, we have the different suspension settings. There's traction control as well as the hazards. We have the exhaust note button. And then over on the left side, this is how you can go from your FM to your Bluetooth and other music. So it's a nice shortcut to see that. You'll notice two air vents just underneath that. And then we have all the climate controls. You can see this has dual zone climate. So we have that for driver and passenger. Fan speed is right in the center. There's a physical button for volume and power for the radio, as well as seek and track. You can also use this dial over on the right side to go through all this information. So if you wanna use this, you can see I'm scrolling on that far left. You don't just have to use it as a touch screen, you can use that dial. We have a few other research buttons. And then I think my favorite part is this new design for the shifter. It's very sleek, matches all these other toggle switches very nicely. To go into reverse, we'll just push it all the way up. 
you'll see the backup camera up here. As I mentioned earlier, there's cameras on the side mirror, so that helps with the top-down view. You can see the backup camera right there. I can go to panorama, so it just gives you a little bit more wide angle, and we can also go to the side cameras too. So it gives you a lot of visibility. You can see the forward-facing camera now. We have the same angles for all of those. So you pretty much have no blind spots around this entire vehicle. To put it into park, we'll just push on the P, and then to use the paddle shifters, you can click the M just behind that. This also has heated seats, so we have those on both sides. There's a cup holder right in the center along with the electronic parking brake. We have the armrest as well, finished off in leather. And if I open this up, you can see there's a few auxiliaries on the back side. You can place your phone here and charge it or other smaller items if you needed to. And then on the passenger side, you can see we have the glove box, plenty of room for all that information. There's also a net down in the passenger footwell. You can see this is the adjustment to move the seat forwards and backwards. We'll take another look at this interior. You can also see the yellow seat belts for the back seats, which we'll get to here soon. And then up in the top, you can see the dome lights as well as a help button as well. And so now moving on to the back seats for this 911 Carrera, this is considered a two plus two. So we do have rear seats. In order to get there, all I need to do is pull on this leather strap. We can move the backrest forward. I already moved the seat as far forward as it can go. And at five foot 10, I will work my way into the back seating area here. Now this is not a vehicle that you would buy as a four seater. If you're in a pinch and you need to use these back seats, you can tell I'm a little crammed but it's very nice to have this usable interior storage space. So we have the one up front along with back here. You can even fold these seats down too. You'll see there's a small lip on the back so you can place in items up on the shelf and have a spot here so they don't slide forwards if you need to do that. So you can fold both of these seats down as needed. And like I said, if you had to have someone back here, you could just for around town. You can see I don't have too much leg room. I have the seat all the way up as I already mentioned. All right, so getting the all new 992 911 Carrera S out on the road. I've been in a few Porsche models this year and every time I get behind the wheel of one, they are growing on me more and more. They are so much fun to drive, whether you have the manual or the PDK dual clutch like we have today. They are just a blast to drive and they sound really good too. <laughs> now that's not crazy loud. I do currently have it in Sport Plus. I also have the exhaust in the loudest mode as possible. And uh, this PDK is incredibly quick and it's just a fun driving car. They handle very, very well. I currently have the chassis in normal mode as well. If I push on this toggle switch, you can feel it get a lot stiffer there. <laughs> oh man, and that's not doing anything crazy, just a normal acceleration getting up to speed here, all the way up into eighth gear. It's just a very comfortable driving vehicle. I could see driving this every single day. We have so much storage space, which is something that I love to see in sports cars like this. Not only is this a great daily, but it provides you with the amenities to make it a great daily. We have all that room up front, along with all the room in the back. Now, while you wouldn't necessarily use this as a four seater, maybe you could have three people in here possibly, it's nice to know that you have that extra space. And I also owned a Lotus Evora that had back seats like this. They were a lot smaller. I never put anyone in the back. It was more for that interior storage, throwing other bags, luggage, anything like that that you wanna put back there. It just makes it that much more practical so you can drive this pretty much all of the time. I can't get over how quick those shifts are. Just giving it a mild acceleration there. It's a, it's a quick car. I love how composed feeling it is as well. It's very quiet on the inside. There's not a lot of road noise or wind noise. And these carbon ceramics, wow, do a great job bringing this to a stop. Wow. I do wish it was a little bit louder, but Porsche models, unless you get up to like the GT3 RS, and type like that. It's not really loud from the factory, although it sounds really good. <laughs> but I love this interior too. Everything is very premium feeling with the leather. We have really nice materials surrounding all of these toggle switches and everything. <laughs> it's a really nice place to be. 
I love the amount of visibility that you have as well. The pillars in the back there are not really all that bulky, so I can easily see out of the back glass there over my left shoulder, look over my right shoulder. We have basically the 360 camera system too. So if you're in parking lot situations, you can use that system so you can see what's around you, of course. And so now as we switch over to the POV angle, give it a little bit of gas here. didn't do anything too crazy a mild acceleration and we are up to speed just like that you can get another view at this interior definitely a really nice place to be I love how simple it is yet it offers all the technology that you would be looking for we have the heated seats the navigation pretty much everything that you want so I love how simple looking it is it doesn't give you a whole lot of buttons we have a few for the climates right there and that's pretty much it so that is great to see I do still have the chassis in sport mode. So going over all these bumps, let's go ahead and just push on this. And in normal, it definitely loosens up. So I love just depending on how you'd like to drive this. If you're gonna take it to some back roads, take it out on the track, you have the suspension to change along with the different driving modes. And with this being rear wheel drive, we have the wet mode too. So that just makes it a lot more versatile in being able to drive this in inclement weather, I love the sound of that exhaust. So we'll give it another acceleration. You can see a quick view of the visibility there. It is so smooth in those shifts. That is crazy to see. We need to do one more acceleration. This is a quick car, definitely a lot of fun to drive. Comment down below, what do you guys think of these Porsche models? Every time I drive them, like I mentioned earlier, it's just something that is growing on me. I can see buying a Porsche. It's just a, it's such a good handling vehicle. I haven't been on any twisty roads today as much as I would like to, but they handle so well going around turns. Very lightweight vehicle, but I think that's gonna wrap it up for my walk around review and test drive. Getting behind the wheel of this all new Porsche 992-911 Carrera S. Once again, huge shout out to HBI Auto for providing this vehicle for me today. Make sure you check out their website. All that info is down in the description. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button if you'd like to stay up to date on our daily uploads. And I'll see you guys in the next video.